Hi, everyone. This is uh, E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Neurology. A couple of weeks ago, I was asked to review an article, very interesting article in the Journal of Clinical Oncology on bipolar androgen therapy for advanced prostate cancer. I was asked to write a review, and I started my review out by saying, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire, was a quote that many of us have used to describe to a patient what testosterone does to a man with prostate cancer. These authors have done this by giving exogenous testosterone to men failing androgen deprivation therapy. Joining me is the lead author of this study, Dr. Sam Denmi. Sam is uh, from Johns Hopkins University and is a medical oncologist and also is in urology at Johns Hopkins. Sam, thanks for sharing this uh, cutting edge article with our readers and listeners of Grand Rounds in Urology. Well, thank you, Dr. Crawford, for that introduction. Uh, today, I'm going to give you uh, some information about um, this concept that we've called bipolar androgen therapy, which we've named it that because it involves giving men um, a high dose of testosterone um, that produces a high level of testosterone in the blood uh, transiently, and then over a period of a month, uh, the testosterone declines again. So we're taking advantage of a sort of shock dose of testosterone to try to prevent the prostate cancer cells from adapting to uh, chronic uh, exposure to a, a given level of testosterone. So the concept starts a long time ago with the observation that prostate cancer cells paradoxically can be growth inhibited when you give them high doses of testosterone. And that was always intriguing to me. And at some point I was able to secure some funding to pursue this idea in the clinic. And the focus has really been on men who are castrate resistant. We really think there's a timing element to this that at the beginning when men have not seen hormonal therapy, uh, their cells would be very sensitive to being deprived of testosterone, but actually stimulated by giving testosterone. So that is a group that uh, we would not want to give this therapy to. Uh, what we focused on is after men have been on hormonal therapy for a period of time, we know that the cancer cells adapt to that low testosterone environment by marked upregulation of the androgen receptor to very high levels. And we think those very high levels of androgen receptor make the cells vulnerable to high amounts of testosterone. So the cells cannot degrade the androgen receptor sufficiently and the high levels of testosterone disrupt the cell cycle in a way that leads to cell death. Um, but really designed for men who've been chronically on low testosterone uh, as a way to disrupt that kind of adaptation. So we've done a couple of trials and the most recent one that we published looked at um, taking men who were castrate resistant, who'd also received uh, the second hormone agent, uh, abiraterone acetate or Zytiga. And we did a randomized study where half of the men received uh, enzalutamide as a standard treatment and half of the men received high dose testosterone, uh, which we call bipolar angiotherapy therapy or, or BAT. So I may refer to it as BAT going forward. Um, and uh, it's a weird study because we're actually giving two treatments that are the exact opposite of each other, testosterone and anti-testosterone. Um, and the results were the study, uh, we, we did the study in uh, about 200 patients uh, at, at a bunch of sites across the country. Um, the uh, the study was also set up to be a crossover study. So the men who uh, received testosterone could then get enzalutamide and vice versa. And what we found that was uh, interesting, um, the study was really designed to show superiority of testosterone over enzalutamide. Unfortunately, we did not see that. We saw that uh, the, the treatments were pretty much identical which I still think it was quite strange given that they're exactly opposite of each other. So the PSA response rate uh, was the same, about 
uh, to either treatment. The duration of response was the same. Uh, so that was kind of surprising to us, um, given that they are so different in, in treatments. The, the, the other thing that was interesting that we saw in the study was that um, when we crossed over, the men who'd been on testosterone first and then got an anti-angiogen enzalutamide, the response rate increased from 25% to enzalutamide to 80% of the men responded to enzalutamide. And the duration of response uh, was about three to four times longer uh, in the men who got testosterone first. So, and the survival uh, also seemed to be longer in that group, although it wasn't powered to see that. Um, we did see that a, a significant, a, an improvement in survival. It didn't achieve significance, but uh, it was very provocative. Um, so we think the key to this story is really the sequence that men start off with a very high androgen receptor level and are vulnerable to getting high doses of testosterone. The cancer cells then adapt to that a uh, high level of testosterone and downregulate their androgen receptor. And that makes them sensitive now to things that lower the testosterone like enzalutamide. Um, our future plan is to see if we can do this over and over again. So as the cell adapts and drops the receptor, we could give testosterone um, or we could give enzalutamide the cells will adapt and upregulate the receptor. We could give testosterone, they'll adapt again, and we could chase them back and forth between the two different levels. And um, to test that idea, we have a new trial that we're doing. It's called the Step Up Trial. And it's really designed to give the testosterone and enzalutamide in sequence over and over again to see if we can continually um, uh, maintain hormone sensitivity and maintain the cancer uh, in, a, in a stable, um, um, state. We've done a study recently that was very interesting because we were able to do serial biopsies on patients who uh, were receiving testosterone. So we had a baseline biopsy and a, uh, a three-month biopsy after three cycles of treatment. And uh, you know, one of the things we hear is that this is a treatment that's going to make the cancer cells increase their proliferation. It's sort of going to feed the fire and to our great surprise, when we look at the proliferative rate in patients who've gotten testosterone, there's a marked decrease in the proliferative rate. So the testosterone actually is very good at causing growth arrest and, and death of these cells, um, which was kind of surprising to us. Um, and we're beginning in the laboratory to try to figure out why the, the, there's such a profound uh, growth arrest that gets induced. Um, we also see over time that this, just like in the laboratory, these cancer cells begin to adapt. So at the beginning, the, um, the androgen receptor level in these biopsies is extremely high, uh, uh, much higher than I would have expected. Um, and we see after three months of testosterone, a marked decrease um, in the level, just as we see in the laboratory. Over time, we see these levels go back up again. So uh, I think, uh, in a simplistic way, we're sort of taking advantage of the prostate cancer's addiction to the androceptor. It seems to be an important part of the disease throughout the entire life of a man with prostate cancer. And so we think there's, there's new ways to take advantage of that addiction by changing the microenvironment uh, rapidly uh, between a, a high level and a low level um, as we've done. Now we're trying to at some point make this a standard therapy and uh, there's a lot of work to be done yet in terms of uh, getting enough data to show that um, um, this kind of new paradigm is safe um, and, uh, and efficacious. I'm trying to figure out who it would work in. I, I guess I, I would add that um, the other surprising thing is that this was very well tolerated, very safe for these patients and in many cases the quality of life improvement is quite significant and men really feel um, uh, much better uh, during the time they're on testosterone.